The Tom Woods Show, episode 2340. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hey, everybody. As the academic year winds down, it's time to start thinking about what you're going to do in the fall. And of course, I highly recommend the self-taught K-12 through Ron Paul curriculum. Not only will your kids get the real story about everything, but they'll also learn the kinds of practical things that they won't learn in the traditional school. For instance, how to be an effective public speaker, how to manage money, and how to run your own home business. And of course, when they reach the high school grades, they will be learning Western civilization and U.S. government from old Tom Woods here. But here's the most important thing. If you're going to join, make sure you join through my link, because only through my link do you get $160 worth of free bonuses. My link is ronpaulhomeschool.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tom Woods Show, episode 2340. So glad to be joined once again by our friend, Carla Garrick. Carla, you used to be, what was the title? President of the Free State Project? Yep. I'm now still officially president, emeritus, queen quill, sucker, chairman, all of the above. (laughs) Well, And ambassador, I would say. Yes. A very effective ambassador. Thank you. So I want to check in. We like to check in with Carla every few months because I feel like what people are doing with the Free State Project, bringing people to New Hampshire, seeing if they can bring about change in one particular place, rather than thinking, if we don't fix the whole world, then forget it. No, we're going to try one practical thing. I want to see how that's going, because I also feel like what you're doing, the very fact that you're doing something is a rebuke to all the extremely negative people out there who are just downers and nothing's going to work, and we're all doomed, and there's no point in trying anything, well, you know, then go curl up in a ball somewhere because there are some of us who think it's worth fighting for. Yeah, absolutely. And the free staters, I would say, we're the example, we're the front lines, we're trying to do the beacon of liberty, we're trying to put the ideas out there so that hopefully it will spread everywhere. But our belief is we got to start, we got to concentrate, we got to be in one place. And so we've been around now for 20 years. I cannot believe this is going to be our 20th pork fest. I mean, that sort of just really blows my mind. It also explains the gray hair. (laughs) You know, we're sort of growing old now with this movement. But yeah, it's really exciting and it's really great to be in a community, a really active, growing, thriving community of doers, people who, as you say, don't want to curl up and just mope but actually figure stuff out and come build and enjoy life. Why not? We got one. Yeah, you're darn right. You're darn right. Well, we are going to talk a little bit about the Free State Project and Pork Fest and particular things that are going on. But I want everybody to understand that this gives rise to a lot of bigger questions beyond the Free State Project in New Hampshire about what we're all about and the different positions people take on some of these big questions. And I think the Free State Project has very, very deftly straddled the position between people who think there might be a political solution, or at least we could politically mitigate some of the worst of what's done to us, and others who want absolutely nothing to do with politics at all. There's been a kind of an uneasy coexistence, but a coexistence all the same of those groups in the Free State Project. Let's get back to that in a minute. You mentioned, quote unquote, pork fest. There will be some people listening who have no idea what on God's green earth you're talking about, and they'll think that it has to do with eating pork. (laughs) Yes, they will. So Porkfest, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com is where people can find all the information. But that is pork as in porcupine, the one that is prickly like a lot of our people tend to be. And so obviously the porcupine is the libertarian mascot. And I recently learned, I didn't actually know that it was the Free State Project's mascot and was then adopted by the LP. I always thought it was the other way around, but I just recently heard that was not the case. So I thought that was sort of interesting. So, hey, that's kind of cool for the Free Staters. So Pork Fest is a week-long camping experience. It's up in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, so it's north of the notch at Rogers Campground. And this year will be its 20th year. 
And I've been to 18 of those 20. So I know a lot about the history. Like it used to be at Rogers and it was moved to Gunstock. Then it was moved back to Rogers. Why that happened. Stuff like, and I love this, the owner of the campground. When I met him the first time, so this must have been back 2003, four. I think I missed three. So let's say 2004. And we were going into the war. This gentleman, he's a retired doctor. He's a smart guy. He was a neocon, like I remember someone else being. (laughs) A very long time ago, but yes. Yes, granted. (laughs) And actually, it was during that time. I mean, a lot of people I knew actually were, and it was interesting watching that journey because I just instinctively have been anti-war since I was like 10 and read Slaughterhouse 5. And I was like, okay, this is, doesn't seem like a good way to solve problems, murder each other. Hmm, maybe we could do better. Let's use our words, right? So anyway, he was a neocon who was like pro-war, anti-pot, and navigating with him just as an example over these 20 years to see how he's changed his views, how he's actually come over. You know, he was a staunch Republican. It wasn't like I had to teach him economics from the start, but just really watching someone kind of grasp these ideas where he's on a campground with us. And you know, because you came, we held Porkfest in 2020. You were our keynote speaker, Tom. Yeah. I was like, I'm doing it. Will you come to my party? And you were like, damn well, yes, I will. <laughs> in fact, let's say a quick word about that. First of all, I'll say something about my involvement. For anybody out there who's thinking, I like the idea of because the idea of it is you have thousands of libertarians there and there are all kinds of events going on. People are giving workshops, there are lectures or debates, and you don't have to go to any of them if you don't want to. You can sit at your little campsite and chit chat with people as they walk by. Everywhere I went, I was greeted by well-wishers. It couldn't have been a more enjoyable time, but you may be thinking, I like all that, but I am not really a camper. And I'll tell you something, when I was growing up, we camped a lot. We went out camping a lot. And I remember as a kid, we played softball. It was the adults against the kids. And the kids won every time. And I was so young, I was too dumb to realize the adults were letting us win. I didn't know that. (laughs) I didn't know that until I became an adult. And then I realized, wait a minute. I knew they couldn't be this bad at it. But I'll just tell you something. My personal camping days are over. That chapter of the Woods biography is closed. But you can still go to Porkfest because there is hotel space nearby, I think Rogers itself has a limited number of rooms. That's correct. But I stay at that, what is it, Grand Mountain, whatever. It's very nice, not very far away. So don't let that keep you from doing it. You can actually shower during the week at a nice private facility if that is your preference. You absolutely can. And there is even one of the, so you mentioned that there are all these different things that happen on the campground. So what we've done over the years is we've developed what is now being called hubs. When we started way back in the day, the idea was how do we show free market ideas and sort of the world we want to create in a practical, physical meat space that people can kind of see, right? And that is one thing. Anyone who's come who had no idea what Porkfest is about leaves with a wow, like the kids are selling stuff, entrepreneurship. So these hubs that are now all over the campgrounds initially started as sort of an agora alley or valley, and they've grown. So people do everything from selling maybe meals and people are getting fancy. I mean, there was a crab boil last time, you know, like people are like flying in food. And there's a lady who comes from New York who does jerk chicken small plates, maybe like 30 a night that are just delicious. So on these hubs, you have all these different things that are happening and you can go around. But I too, am like, yeah, camping, not for me. A lot of the people enjoy it if they have smaller kids and they can sucker them with a softball. Maybe the parents were like, yeah, we can't really play because my back hurts because sleeping on the ground. Not for me either. But as you said, there's camping, there are rooms at Rogers, there's hotels around. I do want to tell folks there are tickets available. The campsite is kind of sold out, so you have to start to get creative. But lots of people are renting out extra spaces on different campsites. There are a couple of hotels downtown. As you said, the Grand Mountain, that's a lovely hotel. Yeah. My vision, my dream is 
I went to Hereticon at the start of last year, and that was a thing Peter Thiel did. It was like very fancy. I was deeply honored to go. It was like 200 people invitation only. I still don't know what I was doing there, but I had a really good time. And I have this vision where I was like, hmm, could they do Hereticon at the fancy hotel while we, the sort of grassroots guerrilla fighters, like we're in the trenches, you know, all the smart people get to sit in their ivory towers and write essays about how this is going to work. And then some of us are out there trying to make it work. Now, you've been in this a long time. So have I. There is nothing easy about herding cats. There is nothing easy about what we are building here in the Free State Project. I mean, the fact that I'm even still standing is probably testament to something. Yeah. But it really is. So what happens is Porkfest becomes this microcosm of the world we want to create. And for people who want to understand it better, there is an NBC series. I think the last time you and I spoke, we talked about this 11-part series that NBC did. They're short. They're 15 minutes long. They cover different parts of the Free State Project. But they did Porkfest, and they're coming back this year. They're doing a follow-up. They're doing a panel discussion to talk about their experience of interviewing and working with libertarians, people who are privacy conscious, people who are kind of paranoid. And it made me realize something. And maybe this is like so obvious to everyone else that it's just going to be one of those huh, Carla moments. But everyone was so relieved when that came out and it was favorable. Everyone watched it and felt like, you know what? They fairly reflected us. That was mostly because one, they let us speak. There was no voiceover. They only cut people speaking. So it was their words. But also, everyone was afterwards, they were like, thank God it wasn't a disaster. Thank God it wasn't a hit piece. That, and I had this moment and I was like, why are we waiting for other people to give us good coverage? We have a story here. We should be telling our story now. Like, I'm really excited to like really get my hands into some content here in the Free State Project and then start to delve into these libertarian issues, of which one I would love to discuss because I want to know what you think, Tom, is so we have RFK is coming to port. Robert Kennedy, I'm kind of excited just because I'm like, ah, Kennedy is coming to my party, yo. <laughs> but one of their demands or requests was that for his speech, which will be in the pavilion, which just a sketch for folks. So there's this massive campground, then there's this sort of like main field area. And we put a couple of tents up there and then there's the large pavilion where about 500 people can sit and listen with the doors open. So they want to bring in metal detectors and basically Porkfest is an open carry gun. People are like, 3D printing guns kind of party, right? <laughs> and so they're bringing metal detectors and they want everyone who goes to his talk to be disarmed. So, needless to say, this has caused a bit of a kerfuffle, <laughs> as we like to call it. So it's been really interesting. So the immediate response was, how dare they come, our rules, our principles, do what we say. And the organizer, Dennis Pratt, who is doing, like, really, it's not an easy job. I've organized four. It's a nightmare. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. He's a hero. He's a hero. And he called me. I was down in my garden. I have a little garden down the hill. So I was a little distracted, to be honest. And he was kind of like, this is what they're saying. What do you think? And I was like, why not? Let's do it. Let's see what happens. Okay. So people were very upset. They're going to do a counter protest. All this. Oh, at one stage, I heard all the former veterans were going to like line up with their guns and like just all this weird energy. And I was sort of like, can't we just treat it like we invited a guest and this is what they're asking and it's polite yeah. to meet them where they Can are? Can I jump in here? Can I jump in yeah. on this? This is not a violation of your principle because your principle is we come to an agreement that's voluntarily reached and we all abide by it. That's our general principle. Guns are only secondary to that. The general principle is that we agree that we're going to be bound only by terms that are acceptable to everybody. And I would go see him under those conditions. 
If that's so it, I, if I felt like the condition was onerous, then I just wouldn't go see him. And then that would be again that that's the world that we are actually trying to build. It's not strictly speaking a guns everywhere world or a free speech everywhere world. That's not what we're building. We're building a private parties can decide what terms they want to interact with each other on. That's the fundamental principle. Not to mention, not to mention, I think we can cut a little slack and be a little gracious to a guy whose father was assassinated and whose uncle was assassinated and who almost certainly has angered not almost certainly, has certainly angered the very kinds of people who might have been behind those two other things, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So maybe he has a particular reason. Now, I know that the best way to deal with gun violence is to have more guns, but, you know, it only takes one New World Order gunshot to the head to put an end to that. So Yeah, and let's not draw that kind of energy. I'm very optimistic it's going to be like a hubala before the time. And then no, it's of just, course. No, absolutely. But I'm just saying that I can understand where he's coming from on that. No, of course. Me too. And so it was interesting, right? So I sort of grappled with the, well, you know, would I, uh, am I going to go see him? And I was like, yes, of course. Because you know what? If I went to see him at UNH or down in Boston or anywhere else. Thing. I wouldn't have had a gun anyway. Right. There are a couple of like playful ideas. So what I'm hopeful for, and maybe this is like a message to our people who are listening. We have over 3,000 people who come. It can be complicated when you're dealing with large groups of people to keep the lid on stuff. And historically speaking, I mean, Porkfest has always been a peaceful event, but we have had like stuff happen over the years. And I've been in some violent, dangerous protests over the years. I've been arrested. I've been at places where it kind of went from you're protesting to some guy jumping on a police car and rapping F the police. Things can turn really quickly. So I definitely want folks who are listening to this who feel like they have a beef to just remember, first of all, from that ambassador perspective, from the diplomacy perspective, we don't have to agree with everyone. I don't agree with all my friends on everything. I don't know when this purism yeah. became such a thing. Like, it feels Stalin-esque to me. I mean, I've been, like, unfriended by people for being in a photo with the wrong republic, you know? And I'm just like, oh, okay, come on. Yeah. Are we like that? No. We're exploring ideas, and it's a massive opportunity. Not only do we have RFK coming, and the tongue-in-cheek thing there was... One, I was like, well, maybe I'll roll in with my own armed security and just be like, hi, RFK, you have your armed security. I have my armed security. That's right. That's fair, right? Or have him disarm everyone and then be like, so now you disarm your security as well. Like if you're disarming everyone, what makes you special, right? Either we all lose our guns. So it'll be interesting. I think there's going to be a conversation I hope that once we're on site, people see this as an opportunity to have cogent, healthy discussions about things we disagree about. There's a way to have a conversation about this and gun rights and property rights and disagreeing on principle on things that could be quite healthy. But also, there's this massive opportunity. RFK, Vivek Ramaswamy, Tulsi Gabbard, I think Kucinich, Dennis Kucinich is coming. I'm excited. Larry Elder is coming from California, you know, and he's actually LP. So I'm really excited about him. Wait, are but you to confusing have these people there? Hang on just a second. I'm pretty sure Larry Elder is GOP. Are you confusing it with Larry Sharp? No, no. I know Larry from New York too. But no, Elder, if you Google him, he will say I'm a small L libertarian. Okay. Well, that's something. Okay. But I don't think he's LP. Yeah. I don't think he's LP party. You're yeah, right. Sorry. Okay. I, I tend to just think of small L. Just, I just clarifying. Take like get. <laughs> okay. No, but correct. You're, you're correct. Yeah. He has. Uh, well, you know, as long as you're mentioning politicians being there and that's not unheard of in the history of Porkfest, but it's not the primary draw. People generally don't go there to hear political candidates. It's interesting that several people from politics and some high-profile people think Porkfest is worth their time, so that goes to show that it's how it's grown in numbers and influence. But I think this might be an interesting moment just to step back and say something about how it's possible for people in the Free State Project, on the one hand, 
to be electing people to the state legislature and trying to influence the political direction of the state, when on the other hand, you have some people who just don't really have any interest in that, but yet they still want to contribute something to the Free State Project. So what does that look like? So, I mean, there's a lot of community building. New Hampshire is a very political state, so everyone's a little involved. Even if it is literally like you're a card-carrying anarchist, you'll still go hold signs for like your friend because one of your friends is a free stater and they're running for something. In the community itself, what we see a lot of is obviously business building. There's been a lot of crypto and we've taken some knocks. You know, the federal government is coming after crypto really hard. It's it's actually really sad to see, you know, as someone who got in super early, it's shocking to me to be like, wow, I'm in a country that is going to miss the boat. I mean, Nigeria doesn't care. El Salvador doesn't care. There are all these countries. So anyway, so we have like crypto people. There's a lot of homesteading. People are just, I mean, I jokingly call it the Breedom for Freedom program now. Lots of 30-something families coming, having lots of kids. There's a massive homeschooling community. There's two or three, I think, free staters started charter schools. So really, I think the best way for people to think about what we're doing is, yes, politics is a means to an end in some ways, right? Like you got to play that game as well. And for the most part, free staters run Republican. And so we've built out a really big Liberty Caucus here of hundreds of people. But really, culturally, I think is where we're going to win the game. Like we have come as reinforcements for people who believe in the live free or die state. And now it's just, you know, how we say politics is downstream from culture. We're creating the culture, right? Like people are opening bars and restaurants and doing shows and having art exhibitions and roasting coffee and People are coming and they're actually bringing their passion or their dream and then making it happen because you actually also have built in customers. So by way of example, I just did my real estate exam. I was like, hmm, I got to do something. I've been bringing all these people here forever, right? So I think we're seeing that sort of, yes, politics is a part of it, but a much stronger part is just really the network we're building out. I think that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, a smart realtor would have a special arrangement with everybody, the local handyman, every single person you would need, every company you need to get up and running. You'd have some special relationship with them when you refer people to that person. And in particular, in the Free State Project, I'm sure we have people who do all those things. I'm sure we have electricians and carpenters and anybody you would need. And so you could not only use a free stater for your real estate agent, but for everything. Right. And that exists. There's an app called freestate.app. It lists all free staters in the state who want to be on there, who do everything from construction to home cleaning to chicken care, dog walking, whatever. So it really is, I've been trying to come up with a phrase and I guess the end of the beginning is kind of where I'm at, right? Like it's been 20 years. I've been here for 14, 15 years But really what's now happening is it's like real. It's beyond anyone's expectation. I believe we are truly going to have a golden black state, a yellow and black state. It's going to take time. It might not be called that big L libertarian to start with, but the flavor is going to be there. And really the kinds of people we need to draw here and bring here are the dreamers, the builders, the visionaries. Here's what I want to see. I want to see people who come in the energy space. We have a nuclear reactor in New Hampshire. We have a license to build another reactor by 2030. If we can get the right investments in the state, I mean, we already, Seabrook already supplies 25% of the eastern seaboard's energy. So if New Hampshire can become energy independent on the eastern seaboard, now we're cooking with some gas, right? I'm sure that's illegal too now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, so energy, crypto, we really, really, really need blue collar workers. We need plumbers and electricians and construction. There's a housing shortage here. The unemployment rate in New Hampshire, I think is 2.7%. So like if you are thinking about what's next, please come check us out. People can look at fsp.org or come to Porkfest. There's still tickets. And maybe for folks who are listening, if you live in New Hampshire, just Come up for some of the speakers you like. The tickets are ridiculously cheap. I mean, I've had a fight with every organizer since my time. My time, 
My first one was in 2009 that I organized and the tickets were $25, the original tickets. Now they're up to 75. And I'm like, I feel like for how popular we got, there's got to be a chart that tells us we should be charging more. But oh, <laughs> yeah. Considering what you get, I mean, it is, people are almost stealing from you with that deal. Hey, folks, some very quick Father's Day advice from our friends at Omaha Steaks. Number one, do not wait until the last minute to get your father a nice gift. But secondly, get him something he's actually going to enjoy and something he's definitely not expecting. Some juicy steaks and other goodies from Omaha Steaks. Head over to omahasteaks.com, use promo code WOODS at checkout, and get $30 off your qualifying order. Packages for dad can include bacon-wrapped filet mignons or other gourmet grillables like their boneless chicken breasts, juicy burgers, jumbo franks, and by the way, a hot dog is not a sandwich, but don't get me started. Many more favorites available, too. Plus, save room for dessert. Most gift packages come with four delicious caramel apple tartlets. The Woods family has been ordering Omaha steaks for at least a dozen years. It's super convenient, great value, and excellent quality. Plus, he'll be the envy of all the other dads. Well, whether he's your father, father-in-law, or father figure, get him something he really wants because dads want steak. Order today and get $30 off with promo code WOODS. That's promo code WOODS at omahasteaks.com. Minimum order may be required. See site for details. Let me say a couple of things that I forgot to mention when I was talking about my own experience. The key reason that I decided to go in 2020, and then I also came the following year, was that it was the COVID craziness and you guys still had the you-know-whats to carry forward and do it. And I was so impressed that there was an event that wasn't canceled that I thought, I just have to be there. I have to be part of this. And I did not regret it at all, had such a wonderful time. So that makes me think of two things. The first thing is more trivial than the second. The first is my experience there is there are a lot of people who are going to feed you with all interesting different kinds of food. But generally during the day, I found that at night when I'm really hungry, and I'm a late night guy, and a lot of people there are late night people, but the food late at night was slim pickings. So if you're an <laughs> entrepreneur, sell food at night at Pork Fest and you will clean up. We're desperate for food at night, okay? Mm -hmm. So all you wake up five in the morning, people, you're wonderful, you can serve breakfast. But we need <laughs> the going to bed at five o'clock in the morning people to be making us food. That's, the, that's one thing. But the more serious thing is, now imagine, I mean, New Hampshire is in New England and New England by and large is blue. And during COVID, New England was hopeless. But imagine, though, if you lived in New Hampshire, regardless of what the government did, you know that you have a network of people all over that state who aren't going for this. People who do want you to come over to their houses, who do want to have normal human interaction. Wouldn't living there have been a vast improvement over living in some of these backwater blue cities or blue states where you were stuck in your house for nine months? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. I have a very close friend who was just out here a couple of days ago because so we stopped talking to each other during COVID. We know each other from San Francisco and then New York. I've known her since I've lived in America. We've come a long way together. We stopped talking to each other because the last thing she said to me before I blogged about it and just stopped talking to her was, well, Carla, I believe in science. And that made my head explode from someone who knows me, like who knows I'm reading the underlying studies footnotes before I form opinions, right? So anyway, so we were just like, we were donezo with each other. And then she came out and I'm very interested in this thing about we have to heal things, right? Like forgiveness is actually a real thing and it's a present you give yourself. It really has very little to do with the other person, although there is that, right? And I was just like, this person adds value in my life. I love her for artsy things and whatever. Can I get over this? Yes, she was wrong. I didn't lean into a lot of the nastiness where you could be like, well, that person just had, oh, you know, they tell the stories. This person just had a heart attack. Oh, this person has turbo cancer. Oh, this person. And I kept my mouth shut the whole time. I think I won some kind of award. But yes. Even she, who was in New York at the same time, they have left New York. They bought her in upstate New York, right? So they wanted to be closer to the city and stuff. But even she, I believe the science, Carla, was like, 
okay, I got to get out of the city because this was hell, right? Like they were really locked down in New York City. And we didn't have that experience at all in New Hampshire. We just la, la, la on with our lives, right? I mean, we got some flack for doing the Pork Fest event, but nothing bad happened. It was an issue of liberties. In the end, the issue is they don't, even if it spread COVID from nose to tail and every single person <laughs> who went, they don't have the right to tell you what to do with your body or to lock you down. We are born free. You know, and so it was a no-brainer for me. And I was really, really grateful that you came. I think that was fantastic. And that's sort of the spirit. And I think that's what we're trying to build in the free state is this sense of people who fundamentally actually understand the issues, right? Like it's freedom, but it's also personal responsibility. Those two things have to go together, you know, and property rights. And so if we can make those things work, I think we have a good chance to do something really, really, really exciting here. Well, the website, once again, first of all, for the Free State Project overall is fsp.org. And then for Porkfest, that's Porkfest with a C, porkfest.com. Check that out. I actually checked it out just before we came on here. And that site is great. It's beautiful. It's not cluttered. It's not amateurish. It's beautifully laid out. You immediately get everything you need to know about it. Perfect. So check out porkfest.com. It's a wonderful time. And you get to meet Carla, who's a wonderful person. And I remember you, so. thinking to myself, now, uh, granted, the dentist is the like the quote-unquote organizer, but I'm sure, Carla, you still are carrying some kind of burden related to this. And so, I mean, I'm very thrilled to announce that I have Queen Cool's court this year. So they gave me like a little lounge where I can welcome the VIPs and Make sure you guys are getting some tea and have a golf cart to drive around, a place for the press to well, land. Well, that is, I, I just felt like I thought for somebody who is semi running an event, you and Dennis did not seem overwhelmed or I can't wait till this is over. There was just such a wonderful spirit from everybody. That's great to hear. I mean, we playfully say it takes a quillage, right? Which sounds slightly commy, but hey, it's a quillage. There's some spike in there. But it's hundreds of volunteers. And I think I had said in the notes before we started, one of the things that I find so interesting, right, is the people who are organizing now, someone like Dennis, right, who is doing a phenomenal job because he took the idea of what is it and decentralized it even more. So if you have 100 hubs, you have 10 people at each hub vested in bringing 10 other people it's almost like a MLM scheme, right? Like you get more and more people to come because you're getting more people to do little bits of it. So we have a sea of volunteers who help. And so that makes it a lot easier, but it is a big event. And it's usually by that Sunday, I was laughing because the Fentons want to do this huge event the Sunday of the end of Porkfest at their farm. And it's going to be very fancy with a lot of these politicos, more a fundraiser, more close and one-on-one. And in my head, I was just thinking, I was like, no, who, who can still do something this Sunday night? Of After a week, I was like, I don't even have a voice then usually. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, it's a good time. Dennis has done wonderful. Oh, that's what I was going to say is watching how we navigate different not even dramas, but just things we have to figure out as a community. So 10 or 15 years ago, the fights were things like, oh, are you going to have on-site security? And it's like, well, yeah, because some people have kids and they wake up at 5 a.m. and some people want to go to sleep at 5 a.m. And sometimes it's helpful to have a neutral party navigating that kind of stuff. Oh, we actually, turns out, do need medics because people twist their ankles and fall in holes and someone gets bonked on the head by the kickball or whatever, right? So then we started to get medical people involved. And then we were like, oh, the facilities break. So now we need infrastructure. So I have to tell you, Porkfest has kind of built its own little government there over the years. But because it's decentralized and everyone owns their area of operations, that was really hard. That was something I really had to learn is to trust other people, is to be like, oh, you can't do it all. You're going to have to be like, this person can handle this and then let them handle it. And with Dennis, because he's more stubborn than I am, he was just like, 
I'm taking it. And I was like, mm, and then I was like, ah, what will happen if I just let go? Let's see. And it's been great. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be really fun. I actually, I have a question for you. So I was thinking, if we have all these mucky mucks coming, right? How do we turn it into an opportunity for the free state or for libertarians in New Hampshire? What are the questions that we should be asking all of them that really like forces narratives in the directions that we want to go? So for me, one is I'm a big supporter of Silk Road and Ross Ulbricht. He was the reason Bitcoin even became a thing. He created a marketplace. He tried to reduce the harm from the war on drugs. That guy is a hero. He's going to die in prison if we don't get someone to say they will let him out and give him a pardon and clemency. So that would be one of mine. Like, hey, would you free Ross Ulbricht? But, you know, maybe it needs to be like Edward Snowden because no one knows who Ross is. But things along that line. Do you have thoughts? Well, first of all, they should know who Ross is and it's disqualifying if they don't. But if you mean like to appeal to an audience outside of Pork Fest, that's another matter. There's a bunch you could come up with. I mean, I would want to say, look, I've heard people come and tell me about how upset they are that such and such Republican voted for a lot of spending. And I don't even care anymore because I, I know you're lying to me. I know you're not going to do anything about it either. So I, I don't even worry about that issue anymore because where there is no solution, there is no problem. You know, so I've just <laughs> forgotten about it. Nothing's ever going to happen, obviously. So don't come here and tell me that. Right. So you know, make that one of my balancing things. No solution, no problem. That's yes, right. Exactly. So what I would say is, look, I know what Mitt Romney is going to say to me. And I know what somebody who's posturing as the anti Mitt Romney is going to say to me. But in general, both of those people go to Washington and screw me. So what can you say to me to convince me that you're not just another one of these people? And mm. I've heard all the speeches about how wonderful America is and what it means to you and all that. I, 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 you know, right. I want to know that you are at least 33% like me in that you're no longer somebody who thinks these government programs sure do have very sad, unintended consequences. I'm past that. <laughs> if they do things that year after year after year after year have exactly the same consequences, I don't think they're unintended anymore. I'm not giving these people the benefit of the doubt. So maybe I would ask them, do you think the ruling class in America is stupid or evil? Oh, what's your answer to that? That's a good one. Do they just need to learn more economics, do you think? Or like, what do you think's going on here? And I would also want to know, what is the end game of the American regime? What are they working toward? I'm talking about all the federal agencies, the mm. bureaucracy, the civil service, the legal establishment, all of it. Like, where are they taking us? What do they want? Do they want what's best for you and me? If not, what do they want? And I think the answer to that question would be very revealing. Yeah, that's really telling. I mean, the subtext, of course, is they're all lining their pockets. That's really what's happening at this stage. I mean, it's hard not to look at American politics and just realize it's turning into a banana republic. The other one I thought of as you were speaking is because we both have an interest in sort of independence and nullification and secession even. And we introduced a bill here last year, CACR 32, that would have introduced a constitutional amendment to put the question to Granite State voters, do you want to peacefully leave the federal union? Yeah. And of course, that freaked people out. And so now everyone's looking. But I thought, oh, maybe there's a way to actually put that issue on the table. Would you support a national divorce? If you support it, what would it look like? How do you feel about maybe a framing technique so you, we can not necessarily box them in, but have everyone sort of thinking about it is there's a real opportunity with nullification. So in New Hampshire, we just started a nullification caucus. So that's a caucus in the state house. It's small still. I think it has under 20 members, but you know, you got to start somewhere. And the idea is much like states did cannabis nullification. We were thinking, well, could we start to do energy nullification? Like, could you just start to say, we're not going to comply with these ridiculous regies and that kind of stuff? And maybe in the energy sector, but then in other sectors as well, maybe finance, wealth, those kinds of things. 
So I guess, again, I'm going back to who are we looking for? And I'm like, I want people who are willing to break some stuff to come, <laughs> but then to help build. And so if we can get these people on record, hitting notes or stories about what is important to Granite Staters. So I'm trying to massage the message towards the things I care about. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe we can ask them about if New Hampshire passed I wouldn't go into the details of CICR 32, but if New Hampshire decided it wanted national divorce, would you send in tags or something like that? I don't know if it's too like, woo, but maybe that's one. <laughs> well, I like the way you think, but you knew that already. So we'll wrap up again with a call to action. Check out fsp.org, but more urgently and immediately, Porkfest, Porkfest with a C, dot com. So thanks so much, Carla, and thanks everybody. Thanks, Tom. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at Podsworth.com.